Oh, this isn't really prepared. By there. So I, I understand you're the interior architect or the architect? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm an architect, but I do mostly interior now. Okay. And I specialize in retail. Okay. And I joined Dilem uh, almost a couple of years ago. Right. And who came up with this bold yellow colored theme? Uh, that actually part of the brand for a long time now. When Jan created the brand, he started by creating the, um, the bottle, mm -hmm. the perfume. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was inspired by uh, those hockey palettes. Hockey puck? Yeah, hockey puck. And uh, so that's what the very flat shape of the um, okay. of the perfume bottle and the yellow cap. He actually found it on an object from the 70s. I think it was like a yellow mm -hmm. back in it, something. I don't even remember on the fear market, market, and he came up with like this very old, um, looking like from the 20, 1920 uh, perfume bottle, mm -hmm. and with this yellow pop of color, and which also like for him represent like uh, positivity, sunshine, mm -hmm. and uh, and also like this clash that we're trying everywhere to have in the design of Vilem, which is like a sort of homage to the past, especially in 1920, and with a sort of futuristic twist. Almost like a sort of um, funny way of saying like 70 futuristic. Okay. So it's a mix of a lot of references and uh, also that's how Jan works on the perfumes. He sometimes have very complex histories with like different characters in his mind and he's just after like sort of simplifying it to get after a sort of uh, story that you could actually tell. But at the beginning when he's trying to work and when he create a perfume and create a story, it's like always very complex and he's probably the only one getting it. And then after we, we start from there and uh, and we narrow it down and always trying to have this balance of like yeah modern and um, like not modern but like futuristic uh, and uh, 1920s so it's like art deco also a bit influence of the house sometimes uh, with this yellow pop of color. Okay, and um, how many stores are there now actually worldwide? Uh, actually, I'm open. Uh, this is the First one and only one. We're opening a second one in Moscow. I hope in a month. Mm. I hope. Uh, and you're doing that one too. Yeah. Okay. And we open uh, for the summer one in Bodrum in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's sort of a permanent pop-up, if I might say. It's only open for the touristic season. Uh, that I also designed, which is sort of mirror of the Parisian boutique, because here we have like leather uh, yellow panel on the on the walls, which are vegan. Uh, I is, wanted to ask. Yeah, <laughs> Yann is vegan, so everything is vegan. Everything is vegan. And yes. also on the components of the perfume, we don't have it anymore. Uh, mm. uh, and uh, and we have aluminium anodized aluminium niches. And uh, and yeah, when I designed bedroom, I did the exact opposite. So we oh, have so. now yellow niches and aluminium walls. It's not the same space. It's a sort of glass box with the curvy walls. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we have a classic uh, Parisian floor, but made of brushed metal. Mm -hmm. And then we retook the, the old way of doing it, but with a, uh, like a futuristic yes. material. So that's when you can see the clash. And yeah, here I made the floor. same one, but with uh, yellow marble, which is wow. a yellow marble from uh, Pakistan. <laughs> and could you tell me about the bottles at the top? Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, Jan, like pretty often, like refers to 1920s and especially like big parties like Jay Gatsby's and stuff like mm -hmm. this uh, and for me the 1920 was like those huge crystal lamps very massive but I mm -hmm. want to get also like a modern twist to it so actually just completely follows the shape of the boutique mm -hmm. uh, as you see everything is like made on sort of a central point which is actually there is a hidden stairs behind oh. and I do absolutely everything with the same central point so you have the lines of the carpet when you can see a bit of the logo actually inside Mm -hmm. And you can also see this space here and also like the round of the carpet, so everything looks harmonious. Very Normally you're slow. not even supposed to see it, but just to give a sort of balance to the space. Yeah. Also it's only 25 square meters, mm -hmm. and I try to make it look as big as possible, also it's using vertical mirrors. Yeah. And so this piece also participates to the idea of movement, and also when you get in the boutique you're like naturally guided to the flash desk area. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> smart. Because we need to sell it. And uh, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> and it's part of the job. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, and also when I arrived at Vidam, I asked uh, if there was any uh, unused things I could use because I'm so trying to have a minimal impact. Everything was done uh, in France, close to Paris. Okay. And uh, the 
further material we had are actually the, um, the switch, which are from Poland, the further speaker. OK. But even the fake leather is made in France. Mm -hmm. uh, aluminum is made in Germany. And everything was assembled uh, in Paris, Parisian suburb. And except the lamps and the, even the, the sound system is French. And so everything is uh, as local, Vida Local as possible. Super. <laughs> And, um, and everything also was made completely to measure, except the switch and uh, the lights. Okay. But well, all good the rest job. Is it is completely a drawn. beautiful store. It was very fun also. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. And so, and actually, yeah, we had, uh, it was a very old production that Jan got when he started, uh, but are, they're actually very big bottles and they have a, a little defect of uh, molding. Uh -huh. And uh, as you imagine, that quantity of perfume would cost a lot. Mm -hmm. And for this kind of cost, we can't have any defects of molding. So mm -hmm. that's why I found them and I just like reuse them as a... So those bottles were are no, are too big to be sold? Because uh, they, they're, they're similar to... They're enough for oh. our luxury standards to be sold because they have, you can see actually the line of molding. Okay. And we don't want this. Oh, right. We have like completely seamless oh, okay. uh, on the bottle. And so, and just because yeah, now I'm just using it as a sort of signature uh, piece. But does, does that mean that you were planning to make f bigger bottles that size? Or are you still planning to do that? We still have something in the... In the pipeline. Yeah. We'll talk about it this morning. Okay. Nothing done yet. Interesting. It will take probably a couple of years. Plus. Thank you. It's in the pipeline. Uh, but probably not for classic perfume. Because mm. it would be like very big formats also. Mm. And we don't want the juice to oxidize. So oh. it's also better for the customers if they buy it by 100 millimeters, which is mm -hmm. now our maximum size. So they always got a fresh juice. Yeah. They don't stock up. Super. You see them more often. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> no